Hello, welcome. Today we're sitting here on the steps of Santa Lucia Hill, where we were for our very first full video from here in Santiago, Chile. And we're here today because we're going to be leaving Santiago, actually, and leaving in the country of Chile. But before I do, I wanted to make a video about the neighborhood where we've been staying. And Santa Lucia Hill is right next to that neighborhood. And that is the neighborhood of La Staria. So come along and learn about the neighborhood. Before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. So we're right here on the northern end of Santa Lucia Hill. And if you were to go north that way, you'd end up at Parque Forestal and the uh, the Palace of Fine Arts, the Fine Art Museum. If you kept going that way a little bit further, you'd end up over by San Cristobal Hill, which we visited. If you go down this street over here to the west, you'd end up at Plaza de Armas. And right over here, if you head past these buildings over here to the east, you'd be in La Staria, the neighborhood where we stayed. So let's hop up and walk around, take a look at the neighborhood. This neighborhood of La Staria, La Staria is, uh, is a very hip and trendy neighborhood. It's right next to the uh, Universidad Católica, Catholic University. The metro stop for Catholic University is out, I don't know, two blocks away from where we were staying. That's on line number one. And this is the kind of neighborhood that I would say is it's kind of completely different uh, day to night. Today we're walking around right now, late morning, on a Saturday, and there's some people walking around, but it is relatively quiet, especially compared to how it is at night in this neighborhood. Now when you get just a little bit east of Santa Lucia Hill, it's right behind us here, you're in sort of the heart of the neighborhood of La Staria. Now, La Staria reminds me a lot of the neighborhood where we stayed in Cordoba in Argentina, which was Barrio General Paz. And I say that because there's a lot of like little cafes and restaurants you can see here. The street is very, very quiet on like a Saturday late morning like this, but Saturday night, you'll see this whole area is packed, absolutely packed. Tons of people out hitting restaurants, bars, cafes, and whatnot. And it also reminds me of that neighborhood in Cordoba because it's not exactly in the center of the city. That would be Plaza de Armas, which is about six or seven blocks west of here um, on the other side of Santa Lucia Hill. This is sort of like a little bit off center from the neighborhood, which is kind of nice. You can see out here, there's people like setting up the restaurants to start for the day. Like I said, this place doesn't really start popping until later, especially in the evenings. But still like a pretty chill neighborhood. It's got a nice vibe. It's a little more of an upscale neighborhood than where we usually stay. Um, usually we're staying in, <laughs> we're trying to stay in kind of uh, more uh, like budget neighborhoods and this neighborhood I will say is kind of pricey it's probably the most expensive neighborhood we've stayed in so far just as far as not just like how much the Airbnb cost but also like the cost of like the restaurants the bars and the cafes around here a lot of them are like a little more upscale a little more trendy a little more hip and a little more expensive but up this street here this is Portugal um, all these bars, wine bars, cafes, restaurants, all along here for about, I don't know, three or four blocks from, from Avenida Bernardo O'Higgins, which is about three blocks behind us, all the way up, all the way up through here. This neighborhood also, like, during the evening especially, has a lot of uh, street performers, a lot of street vendors along the streets selling stuff. 
at this corner here. It goes up into a little pedestrian walk here, just a very short pedestrian walk that cuts through to the main avenue, the northern part of the neighborhood. The neighborhood itself is actually really small. Like, it's just tucked in in this tiny little triangle between two avenues, bordered on, one, on two of the sides, and Santa Lucia Hill on the other side. There's a museum of visual arts, Santiago here. And as you can see, this tiny, just a short pedestrian walk, it ends up here at the other avenue. And now this other avenue So this other avenue here in Merced, if you keep walking this way, this takes you like a couple blocks down, right back to Santa Lucia Hill, where we were, where we started the video. So, like I mentioned, it's a pretty small neighborhood, but it's very densely packed. It's densely packed with uh, mainly restaurants, cafes, bars, mostly nightlife stuff. And some of the other neighborhoods that we stayed um, I, what I really liked about them was that there were a lot of like butcher shops, vegetable markets, stuff like that. This was in Argentina. And um, it's not so much the case here in this neighborhood specifically, because it's such a small neighborhood and it's really like a popular, more popular like kind of nightlife neighborhood. There aren't really as many of those things, but luckily for grocery shopping, there are two uh, large supermarkets that are both easily within walking distance of the center of the neighborhood. One of them is over here by Santa Lucia Hill. There's a lighter supermarket. And then down across uh, Avenida Bernardo O'Higgins on Portugal, the street that we were just on, if you go the other direction, across Avenida Bernardo O'Higgins, you, uh, you end up at a Unimark grocery store, a large supermarket. When I say supermarket, I don't mean like the supermercado like we saw in neighborhoods in uh, Buenos Aires. I mean like a full-on, large, what you, would, what you would consider a supermarket in like Europe or the United States. Large, multiple departments, get everything you need all in one place. And the, the options as far as the grocery stores, Unimark and, uh, and Lider, actually have very good quality and... Um, Good quality, good selection, good prices. I kind of liked the lighter more. I was, a, I was more partial to it. They sort of seem to have a larger selection and slightly better prices up here um, than did the Unimark, but I did shop at the Unimark a couple of times as well. You can see there's another bar over here, the Red Pub. That place is pretty good. And uh, see, here we are, back where we started, Santa Lucia Hill. Now. If you walk down this other street on the other side of Santa Lucia Hill, there are some restaurants and whatnot along there, but I want to go back down to Avenida Bernardo O'Higgins here because that's where the Universidad Católica, um, that's where that stop is. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's go over here real quick along Avenida Merced because there is actually some stuff sort of like right over next to the lighter grocery store I was talking about. A couple of cafes and restaurants, nice stuff. And I also want to show you one of the reasons that I really like this neighborhood. And that is, it is um, basically sandwiched in between two metro stops on two different lines. The Universidad Católica stop on line number one, and also the... Uh, Bellas Artes, Bellas Artes stop on line number five, the green line. So having having like two metro stops on two different lines right next to the same neighborhood is super, super convenient. To get to any place in the city uh, via the metro, it's really nice to have the, the two options. And this Bellas Artes was about three blocks away from where we were staying and the Universidad Católica stop was about two blocks away. So perfect, perfect for walking easily to the, uh, to the metro stops.
So right along this street, Merced, on the other side of Santa Lucia Hill, there are a bunch of uh, more restaurants and cafes all along here. And the lighter grocery store that I mentioned is right up here on the left. And actually, if you go across the street here, there's a pedestrian walk that goes up about a block. And if you go up this way, at the other end of this pedestrian walk, that's where the metro stop is. Bellas Artes, the metro stop on the uh, number five metro line. So the number five green metro line. And this, this is a nice little pedestrian walk here. There's lots of trees. Um, it's not exactly like a, uh, it's, it's actually a street. There are cars that come through here, but it's not exactly like, uh, uh, there's like a lot of shops and whatnot along here or street vendors like you would expect in some pedestrian walks but there are a couple of cafes here and the these apartment buildings along the way but it's an easy way to cut through to get to the uh, to get to the metro stop from this neighborhood back here in La Staria but you know like I mentioned La Staria is such a tiny neighborhood you know the neighborhoods we've been staying in previous to this have ranged from you know being sort of smaller sectioned off neighborhoods um, to pretty large you know central to the city neighborhoods but this one this one because of the way it's tucked in in between the avenues and the river actually to the north also if you go just a couple more blocks and also like the um the hill, Santa Lucia Hill. It's just sort of this little pocket that's sort of hidden away, which is kind of cool. It's got a kind of cool feel. Anyway, here's the metro stop right across the street here. And up here next to this metro stop, same thing. Lots of cafes, heladerias. You can get delicious ice cream, restaurants, bars. Like I said, this whole neighborhood is a very restaurant, cafe, bar type of neighborhood. And uh, I've mentioned it before in some of the videos that like, I'm not like super big on, on nightlife. I mean, it's not really true. I like going out at night, have a, have a couple of drinks, but I like to do it in places that are a little bit chill, you know, a little relaxed. And uh, this neighborhood, I would say, is pretty chill. There's not a lot of like the club scene or anything like that in this neighborhood. A lot of the places where people are going to go and have drinks in the evening are going to be like, you know, restaurants with outdoor seating and uh, bars that are sort of like more chill, more chill type bars. Anyway, there's Santa Lucia Hill down there one block over. Like I said, we've really just been making a loop um, around, around the neighborhood, around the different blocks. Um, but yeah, this neighborhood, a little more chill like that. The one difference is because it's so compact in that tiny little area and there's so many restaurants and bars packed into one tiny little area, the uh, streets get really crowded in the evening. Um, they, the, there's just a lot of foot traffic and a lot of people walking around. They put the tables out on the sidewalks. There's street vendors out selling along the sidewalks because of course, this is Santiago, like the city of street vendors. And uh, it does make the, um, the sidewalks get a little bit crowded. So you just have to sort of be like ready for that. If you're trying to walk through that neighborhood in the evening and you're like in a hurry and you need to get somewhere, that's probably not, not the way you should go. Cause like you're going to be end up on a, uh, you're going to be end up on like someone's like basically someone's gonna be walking slowly in front of you. People are gonna be blocking the sidewalk. It's just gonna happen. So, all right, we're back here, Santa Lucia Hill. And people people along the uh, street here and the cafes and the restaurants, they're already out, um, already out barking for their restaurant. That's something I've noticed here a lot in Chile that uh, I didn't notice as much in Argentina is like restaurants, bars, cafes, they will have a barker out in front, someone who is out there, like a tout, you know what I mean? Who's like out there with the menu, hitting up everybody who comes by, saying like, hey, do you wanna, do you want a cafe? Do you wanna come in, have a drink? That kind of thing. 
uh, very, very proactive uh, here at the restaurants and cafes and bars. A lot of them have that, and a lot of them, the, the, when you walk through like a neighborhood or an area, a street, a block that has like multiple, multiple cafes or restaurants, there'll be three, four, five, six, ten of those people along the way, and they'll all be like hitting you up. Hey, hey, come check this place out. Come check this place out. All right, back on Avenida Merced, walking uh, east this time, away from San, uh, Santa Lucia Hill. And another thing that's a little different about this neighborhood than some of the neighborhoods where we stayed previously is this neighborhood is actually a lot more of a tourist attraction type neighborhood than um, some of the other neighborhoods where we stayed. Now, the, I, I've definitely run into tourists in other places along my trip here, and I've definitely met tourists who are staying in some of the neighborhoods where I was staying, more specifically in like Barrio General Paz in Cordoba and in um, the like central Mendoza neighborhood. Because like where we were staying in Buenos Aires, Wilde, like no, there were no tourists staying there. I was like the only tourist probably in the entire, in the entire like city of Wilde. But here, definitely I've run into a lot of tourists. You hear a lot of people on the street speaking other languages, English, heard German, Chinese, uh, Portuguese, I just heard two people right behind me speaking French. Um, I've run into people who are like tourists from other countries in South America, from Argentina, from Colombia. And because of that, you're definitely more likely to find um, more people here, uh, as far as Chileans who work, like in the restaurants and the cafes, who speak a little bit of English. Uh, so it's gonna be easier to get by staying in this neighborhood if you don't speak very much Spanish. Like, there are more people here, I've noticed, um, like a higher concentration of people here who speak English than uh, in the places where I was staying in Argentina. In general, I would say in Chile, I've met more people here who speak um, English. I don't know if that's like a across the board thing for Chile or if it's just because of the neighborhoods that I've been staying in and the like circumstances, but uh, it has been true. I've met a lot more people, not a lot, but a significant amount more people who speak um, passable English than uh, I have met in Argentina. In Argentina, I really had to put my like Spanish to the test. And here, what I've noticed also is if like, you find someone who does speak English, and like your Spanish is not great like mine. I mean, it's okay, but like they can tell obviously it's not my first language. So when I'm speaking it, um, they're like much more willing to just like immediately switch to English, especially in this neighborhood, because like I said, it's a little more touristy. Um, I think in Argentina, people would like stay in Spanish and they would like, even if they spoke a little bit of English, they would more likely like try and speak in Spanish to me than to switch to uh, to English so I guess if that's what you're looking for in this in a neighborhood and you want people who are willing to like switch to English pretty quickly with you then maybe this is the place for you and anyway, we were back here on Portugal Street heading back down south came up this way before I'm gonna walk down to the end of this street and show you the other metro stop which is uh, Universidad Católica and uh, oh one other thing to note for uh, tourists coming from other countries um, if you walk around this neighborhood uh, like and pretty much in a lot of places in Chile uh, it smells like Otto's jacket like people are smoking weed around here a lot and I think that's a thing in Chile I'm pretty sure in Chile weed is basically legal like I don't know exactly the laws but from what some people have told me and just from what I've observed, it's like a thing that a lot of people do and nobody cares about it. Like the cops don't care about it because uh, pretty much everywhere in this neighborhood, it kind of smells like weed. And you see people just sort of like out in the open, like in a park or something, or sitting on a bench on the street, like smoking weed. So it's very friendly for that um, around this neighborhood. But that also makes sense because like I said, this is 
a, uh, a college neighborhood. There's a tiny little plaza right here along the street, which is kind of nice. You can come sit in the shade um, if you want to cool off during a hot day here in the neighborhood. So right back here on this corner of uh, Padre Luis de Valdivia and, and uh, Portugal, or Jose Victorino Lastaria. I think during this little stretch, it's called Jose Victorino Lastaria. And once you get across Bernardo Higgins, the street's called Portugal. But right here, this is kind of like the main corner for the, uh, for the uh, neighborhood. And of course, this is what it looks like on a late morning on Saturday. And it looks very different uh, on like Saturday night. <laughs> Another cool thing about this neighborhood is uh, down in this direction, there are these two little like pedestrian mall walkthrough areas. This one here, where there's restaurants and cafes and bars that go all the way back, and then the one across the street behind those gates there as well. And like I said, same thing, they look like this during the day in the morning, but at night when they're opened up, these places are really, really popping. So they do manage to pack in, you know, tons of restaurants, shops, bars in this tiny, tiny little space in this neighborhood. And uh, it makes for a very, very lively uh, nightlife here. But like I said, not, this is not like the place for the club scene or anything like that. It's all uh, more chill restaurants and bars at night. Uh, but like I mentioned also, this neighborhood it is pretty pricey. The bars, the restaurants, and things like that, they're, uh, they're higher end. And if that's not exactly what you are looking for, and for me, I'll be honest, I'm more of like a dive bar kind of a guy. I would much rather find a nice place, you know, where like they, uh, you know, the beer is cheap and the food is good and the people are nice and they're playing good music all the time. Um, but it's just like a little divier than, uh, than some of those more upscale places back there. Well, this neighborhood has that too, and they have two of them. And now we're here on Avenida Bernardo O'Higgins. And right in front of us, on the left, where that dog is, uh, that's the metro stop, Universidad Católica. And across the street, there is Bar Alameda, right there on the corner, with the tables out in front that place is a little more um, like cheaper a little more divey which I kind of like but this is my absolute favorite restaurant slash bar in the entire neighborhood and it's right here next to the metro stop the restaurant Cantabrico and they're not really open right now but we'll come back of course in the evening check this place out because it is my favorite All those things that I mentioned, uh, here's the metro stop by the way, all those things that I mentioned that I like about a nice divey bar and restaurant, uh, that place has it. The beer is cheap, the food is good, 
the people are really nice. The uh, atmosphere is lively. There's always a bunch of people in there. They are playing really good music uh, kind of all the time. Uh, so I, I really, really like that place. I can't say it enough. I went to that place more than a few, more than a few times while I was here in this neighborhood. Um, I like it a lot. Cantabrico, restaurant Cantabrico. Anyway, you hook around this way, you end up back in that little uh, like little like alley here, and like I said, along the neighborhood here, the alleys. There's all uh, they're lined with cafes and restaurants as well. They really pack a lot into this neighborhood. Very very dense dense neighborhood. Most of the places are just real tiny and they're packed into a little tiny footprint. Which is kind of cool though because it provides a lot of variety and a lot of options for like what kind of food, what kind of bar, what kind of cafe you want to go to. And of course, along with all of those, along here, along the strip, the strip here, like this whole area in the evening is just completely lined with street vendors, people out on the street selling stuff. So, and street performers too. So definitely a good place to come and check out that kind of a scene uh, in the evening. I think that's about it. We've seen what the neighborhood looks like when it's quiet. In the late morning, we've seen what the neighborhood looks like in the evening when it's popping. And last but not least, right next to our apartment in the building where we were actually staying, there is a tiny galleria. Galleria de la Staria, which is like a little tiny mall. And there is this ice cream shop here, Montana which is 100% deadly because it's like right next to the apartment and it's open late and I had way too much ice cream way more than I should have here the mall is just starting to open up but it's very very small Gotteria just a few shops and uh, like a nice uh, chocolate shop in the back and a few uh, other shops in here it's a little jewelry and gift store um, yeah and actually if you go upstairs in this place I thought this was really nice too there's like a little terrace up here this is the Vietnamese restaurant Bistro Viet. This place is quite good. A um, little bit pricey, but delicious. And like I said, out here, a nice terrace where you can sit and enjoy the day. And it's sort of just stuck in here in amongst all the buildings in the neighborhood. It's a tiny little oasis hidden away. Very nice. So that's it, I think. We're here back out in front of our apartment seen a good amount of the neighborhood here and during the day and at night and I would say if this is the kind of neighborhood that you like if you're if you want like fine dining um, hip hip bars restaurants cafes all like very tightly packed in a little neighborhood like this next to a university so it has a very like sort of hip college feel uh, to it and also it's close to the center of the city uh, but not directly in the center of the city. Also highly accessible by public transportation sandwiched in between two uh, metro stops on two different metro lines. This is the neighborhood for you, La Staria. I really enjoyed staying here. Um, even though it wasn't like the typical type of neighborhood where we usually stay, I still really enjoyed staying in this neighborhood. And um, I would definitely recommend, I would definitely recommend staying here if you're coming to visit Santiago. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.